Um, I'll pass over now to Rod Yates, who is the head of original content at Jackster. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that to start with, Rod. Yeah, I, I absolutely will. Um, firstly, thank you everyone for joining me um, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk to you as well. Um, you know, as Daniel mentioned, I know that it's hard to find time for these sorts of things. So uh, I'm really thrilled to be able to talk to you about music credits and why they're important um, and how your music credits can help you. But before I tell you about me and Jack and credits, I'd actually love to get um, an indication of who's on the call in terms of what your interest in music is, whether you're a songwriter or an artist or a producer or an engineer, or maybe for those who have their camera on, and if you don't have your camera on, if you just give a little thumbs up icon, uh, do we have any songwriters who are watching? Great. Any artists? Great. Okay. Producers or engineers? Yes. All right. We're going over there. Okay. So we've got a bit of a, a mixed bunch, but um, yeah, like I said, great to uh, great to speak to you all. So a little bit about me. Um, one of the reasons I'm very thrilled to be talking to you today is because I'm a Canberra boy. Um, grew up in Canberra, was raised there, had all my formative musical experiences in Canberra, played in bands there in um, many venues, which I'm afraid are no longer there, like uh, the Terrace Bar and the Terminus and Finnegan's and, and a and U bar, um, all those sorts of places. I don't know if anyone on this call remembers any of them, but they were great places and I, I have very special memories of them. Um, this was all pre, pre internet, pre Facebook, pre MySpace. So the way that we would promote these gigs is by walking around the streets of Canberra uh, at midnight or 11 p.m. in the middle of winter with a bucket of glue and posters and stick them up everywhere and um, inevitably come back the next day and find out that they'd been covered over. So we'd have to go out and do it all again then. Um, I started my professional career as a journalist there working. Um, first, I started a fanzine and then uh, started working with BMA, moved to Sydney and um, started Kerrang, which is the uh, British metal and rock Bible, started that in Australia. Um, then moved on to Empire Film Magazine, then Rolling Stone, which I edited for six or seven years. And now here I am at Jackster, um, which is the world's biggest database of official music credits. Um, now I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to remember to share the scratch, share the sound and put this in presentation mode. And here we go. So as you can see, we're going to be talking about song credits um, and how to use them correctly. And, when I was growing up in uh, in Canberra, you know, one of the ways that I learned about music was from staring at liner notes. So I would look at albums like The Unforgettable Fire by U2 and I would look over the liner notes and I would try and figure out who did what and what all these names are and imagine this mythical world where this music was created and, and all these people were, uh, were who were involved with it. And then after a while, I'd start to see the same names on records. So I'd be in the record store at Impact Records when it was around and I'd see Brian Eno or I'd see Daniel Lanoir and I'd think, wow, I really liked their work on The Unforgettable Fire. Um, I'm going to check this out. And that was a real way as a fan that I discovered music. Um, the liner notes and credits kind of steered me in the direction of other songs and other music, uh, music that I might like. But for all the professionals who you can see listed on that, slick there, people like Brian Eno, Daniel Anwar, the additional engineer, Kevin Killen, uh, Randy Azradi, the assistant engineer. For these people, these credits were actually their lifeblood. Um, you know, that's how they could prove that they'd worked on these records and people could see it. And someone could see Kevin Killen's name and say, well, he was an additional engineer. He must know what he's doing. He worked with you too. Let's reach out to him to work with us. But then somewhere in the 2000s, music became digitized or, or digital and downloads happened and Napster happened and all that sort of stuff. And people started moving away from buying physical product. And as that happened, all the credits disappeared. You know, all those names that you could easily see by buying a copy of The Unforgettable Fire, all of a sudden it was really hard to find that information. And the impact was devastating because, you know, how do you prove what you've done if you can't show people the credits? And how do you use those credits to get more work if you can't prove that you've worked on it? How do you get paid royalties if you can't prove that you've been credited on something? So there was this real black hole of credits that was created. Um, you know, and, and going back to even just being a fan as a discovery tool, how do you go and discover 
lots of artists when you can't see what people have worked on. Um, and that is why we created Jackstar. So Jackstar is the world's biggest database of official music credits. And if you're looking for a comparison, um, it's, it's like the IMDB of the music industry. So the IMDB, IMDB is the film website that has all the music credits, uh, sorry, all the film credits. Um, and it's a very reputable source and Jackster is the music equivalent of that. Uh, and what you're seeing, I'm, you're scrolling through now is just the Jackster homepage. Um, there are other music credit websites, but there's a big point of difference between Jackster and these other sites. And that's that all the credits on Jackster are official. So we've done deals with record labels and publishers and distributors all around the globe for them to send us their information. Um, so none of the credits on Jackster are crowdsourced. Um, so people can't just go onto a page and say, you know, start putting credits on their profile page, claiming to have worked on stuff they actually had nothing to do with. And we have, you know, there are documented examples of people who would do that and would claim to work on releases they hadn't worked on. And then they would use those credits to get more work um, but it was all a falsehood. So the idea is that with all the credits on JAXA, they can be trusted. If you show someone your JAXA profile, people know that what you're saying is what you've done. So that's a really key difference between JAXA and all the other websites. Um, just to give you a bit of an example of the size of JAXA. So you can see here that um, we have 60 million pages. So as a comparison, Wikipedia has 55 million pages. So we're one of the biggest websites in the world. Uh, we have 221 official music credits and we get 800,000 new credits every single day. Uh, and that comes from the 283 data partners that send us this information. Um, and they represent almost one and a half million record labels. So the ecosystem is absolutely enormous. Um, and all these labels and all these data partners, they send us their information, like you know, the, the metadata, the credits of who did what on what track, um, and we collect it all um, in one official place. So in terms of what we do, I'll just stop this before it starts. Every time we receive a credit for a songwriter or an artist or a producer or an engineer, we create a profile page for them. And then every other time we create a credit for one of their pieces of work, that credit gets added to their profile page. So little by little, we're effectively creating people's resume for them. Um, and then basically that gives them one page and one source of truth. So if I press go here, you'll see up in the top right hand corner that you're searching for Louis Shule, who's a songwriter um, from Sydney. And this is what his Jackster profile looks like. So he set up this catalog at the top of his page, which has the credits that he's the proudest of. But then you go underneath that and you get all the rest of his credits uh, and all the other information because he's a Jackson Plus member and a co-founder of the company. He's been able to fill in information like his bio um, and links and his image. Now, if you look to the right hand side over here, there's a real snap, just a little snap, so, snapshot summary of all of his credits that are on Jackster. 286 releases, 273 songs. If you scroll down, you can see his certifications, you can see his links. So he's put all the links so that if anyone looks at his page, he's directing them to where he wants them to look. Now, once we get these credits, we deep link them. So if you look at Louis's page, for example, and you see that he's worked with Daniel Johns, and you think, oh, I really like that album. I wonder who else worked on that. You click on the record. And then there all is, all the credits. And again, if you're a songwriter or you're an artist and you're thinking, I'd really love to work with the producer who worked on that song, Chained. I love that song on the album. You click on Chained and there you go. You can see who worked on that. And it's Styles Fuego worked with Daniel. So you can click on Styles' um, link and then that takes you to Styles Fuego's page. And you can see everything else that he's worked on. And you can sort of figure out, well, judging by what he's worked on, is he going to be right for me? And if he is, then you have a name now and you have the ability to reach out and contact this person. Um, you know, it's, again, it's also an incredible discovery tool as a fan. If you liked what Styles did with Daniel, you can look at his page and you can see Troy Savan and Imagine Dragons, and you may then start to reach out for them to, to try and find their music. So why are credits important and who should care? Well, 
the answer is everyone, whether you're an artist, a songwriter, a producer, an engineer, a manager, an A&R rep, or you work at a record label or publisher, or even if you're a fan, music credits are incredibly important. So if you're an artist or a songwriter or a producer or an engineer, your credits can get you more work because people will know what you've done. If you work in A&R, how do you find collaborators for your artists if you don't know who worked on what? And that's why the credits are so important. If you're a manager and one of your artists loves the sound of an album and wants to work with that producer, how do you find that producer if you can't find the credits for that? So that's why they're really, really important. I mean, with all that stuff, of course, you could ask around and you could do some digging, but that's labor intensive, it's time intensive, and you may not be guaranteed of finding what you want to find. Um, and there are also financial implications for artists and songwriters. There are royalties to collect. And if you haven't been credited correctly, then you can't claim your royalties. Um, now, I'm just going to play you a video uh, of someone called Mitch Allen, who can explain everything I've just said a lot more succinctly. And Mitch actually works in the industry. He was the lead singer in a band called SR71, who did very well for a while. And then he moved into music production and songwriting. So I'm just going to play this little video of Mitch explaining why music credits are important. Um, and if you can't hear it, please signal and I'll figure out what I've stuffed up. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mitch Allen and I'm a songwriter producer from Los Angeles, California. And I've worked on hits from Kelly Clarkson, Jason Derulo, Demi Lovato, and a slew of others. Music credits are so important because that's how we live. I get a job, I do a good job, somebody hears it and says, oh, I love this song, who did it? Oh, Mitch Allen did it. That's gonna be my next job. Music credits are what we live by. Those credits are the thing that's gonna get you in the door, and they're gonna get you the job, they're gonna get you the gig, they're gonna get you the opportunity, no matter what you're doing in this business. So let me give you an example of how my credits led to me getting more work. Uh, I had co-written a song called 1985 that Bowling for Soup had released. And while it was on the charts and doing really well, people started discovering that me, the lead singer of this other band, had actually co-written that song. And they started asking me to come to sessions and write for their artist. But all of, all, all of that wouldn't have happened had my music credits not been out there and people read them and wanted me to start writing songs with their artists. That's why a website like Jaxta is so important because all of your credits are in one place. Type in your name and there's everything you've ever done. That's all people wanna know. What have you done? That's gonna lead you to other rooms, more work, better songs, bigger songs. It's gonna make your career. I actually use Jaxta every day. Um, I don't necessarily use it for myself, looking myself up. Uh, I use it for other people. I hear a song, I think it's great. I wanna know who worked on the song. I wanna know who produced it. I wanna know who wrote it. I wanna know who mixed it. It's a way for me to connect with people that I know I wanna work with. So then I call my manager and I say, hey, can you get me a session with this writer? Can I work with this producer? Can I have my next song mixed by this mixer? JAXA to me is the way that I'm connecting with other music business professionals, people that do what I do. Um, I've never had that resource before. So I can honestly say I use it every day. So I guess the big question out of all this is how you can use your credits to build your career and create opportunities and connect with others. And the simplest answer to that is that your credits allow you to promote your achievements. So you can show people, this is what I've done and this is why you should work with me. If your credits are displayed and they're easy to find, then you're visible. People can find you, they can see what you've done, they can reach out. We should collaborate with that person. But if your credits aren't easy to find, then you're invisible. It's very hard to find you. You can also find out people that you want to collaborate with by looking at their credits. You know, you, you can go on and see that, as I was showing before from that in, uh, example of Louis' profile, if I really like this song or I really like this album and I want to know who worked on it, you can find their details and then figure out how to collaborate with them. And you can also use your credits to make sure that you're getting paid. Um, correctly. So on Jaxta, you can claim neighboring rights royalties um, through our relationship with Song Trader. And neighboring rights, they're royalties that are paid to the owners of a piece of music or people who performed on a piece of music that's broadcast publicly. 
And that market is worth billions per year. So again, if you've got your credits and you're credited correctly, then you may be eligible to claim royalties from that, but you can't claim those royalties if you're not um, credited. I'm just gonna show you one more video before we finish up. Uh, this is from a singer songwriter from LA. She's also a producer and a musician. Her name is Angel M. Um, and she's had a slew of releases coming out recently. I think Girlpool just put out their latest release, which Angel worked on. Um, and again, she can just explain really clearly why music credits have been important to her throughout her career. So I'll just play this. My name is Angel M and I am a producer, recording engineer, songwriter, and musician. I am a collaborative worker, um, so I love to work on teams, I love to work with other producers and engineers, I do a lot of vocal production, and I do get a lot of people coming to me and saying, I heard your work on, you know, the Ali and AJ record with Eve Rothman, I heard you work on this with Justin Raisin, and they know my style and they've had an opportunity to see that, and they've looked me up and found me and given me these opportunities, so it's really great to have a database like Jaxta where somebody is like, who did that? You look it up and then you can find that person and get them on your record. And the fact that all the credits on JAXA are verified means that they can be trusted. I've actually used JAXA to vet some producers that have reached out to me because I do a lot of work with producers, co-producing, um, editing, vocal production, stuff like that. So I have had a couple of people that have reached out to me and I've gone onto the site and looked to see what they've done and gone like, oh yeah, this is right in my wheelhouse or like, oh no, this is not what I do at all. So it's actually very helpful for that kind of stuff. One of my favorite things to do is actually to check the global charts on JAXA because everything's compiled really, really nicely. It's really easy to access and I, um, when I need to do homework on maybe an artist that I don't know about, or I need to look at what's modern, what's trending. Um, it's a great way to just reach into that and do my homework from there without having to go to Billboard and to this and to that. It's just all there. Credit is important. Credit is currency today. You know, usually if you're engineering, you get a flat rate. You don't see royalties. You don't see bonuses. You don't really have any other incentive. The only really thing you have to show for it at the end is that credit, and when that's missing, you're not represented and you miss opportunities. So it's really important. And there's just, there's some dignity in being credited for your work that's really important. Some people will be like, I don't need the clout. I don't need to have my name on the record. You should, if you worked on something, you should have your name on it. A record is something that lasts forever. That's part of your legacy. And that's something that you should be able to carry with you and people should be able to see. I would tell others to use JAXA because they deserve to be represented. We're the ones who determine the culture in production and engineering. And if we are not engaging with our work and if we're not showing it, if we're not giving people opportunities to see it, and if we are not making sure that we're represented, it's very easy for us to disappear. With something like JAXA, we have the opportunity to be represented. It's not about trying to go out and get publicity. It's not about anything other than this is a record, I worked on it, let's go from there. That's why I use JAXTA. And last but not least, um, how can JAXTA help you? Um, so everything that I've been talking about um, to you know, talk to you about the importance of music credits, um, at JAXTA we take music credits very, very seriously. So we can take all the information that we get from the record labels and the producers, and we can take all your credits and put them in one place and effectively create your resume for you, which if you're a JAXTA Plus member, you can claim, or a JAXTA Core member, which is free, you can claim your profile, you can manage it, you can upload your bio, your, your photo, um, your links to various things that you want people to know about, um, your contact details. Basically, you can have a one-stop shop where if anyone wants to work with you, they can see all your information in one place. And you also now have one link which you can send to people which has all that information. Um, JAXTA Plus members can also create one sheets which can be very time consuming to do, but with your JAXTA profile, you can just take all the information from there, put it on a one sheet um, which you can send to people when you're pitching for work. And that just has a real basic snapshot of the information, the most important information that you want people to know about. Um, there are lots of other um, fantastic features that come with being JAXTA Plus or JAXTA Core members that help you keep track of when music you've been working on has been released or 
gives you the ability to make sure that people see the work that you've done first when they come to your page. So you can really highlight the key work that you want people to know about. Um, and you can also do things such as lodge neighboring rights claims, which I mentioned before. Basically, we're trying to create this ecosystem for people who work in music, whether it's behind the scenes or out front, that they have a place where they can be seen and that they can use their credits to create more opportunities. Um, and that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to show to you today, to, to show to you today, talk to you about music credits, talk to you about Jackster. Please have a look at jaxta.com. That's J-A-X-S-T-A.com. Um, you'll go see when you go there that there are various membership offers. Some are free. One is free, Jaxta Core. Jaxta Plus is a paid tier um, and has lots of amazing features that can help you with your career. Um, but yeah, once again, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you all. Um, and I hope this has been somewhat informative. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rod. Thank you so much. Um, if there are any questions uh, today, please feel free to uh, pipe up or uh, send your question through the chat. Um, you kind of touched on this a little bit. I've got a quick question for you, Rod, if that's all right, cool. just to kick things off. Um, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit about this at the end, but I thought maybe it might be good to just like to explore it a little bit more is it's obviously Jax is obviously not just um, just a search tool. It's like an incredible networking tool as well. Um, what I suppose are some of the key things that you see in, in artist profiles versus um, like engineer or producer profiles that really help those people stand out against, um, yeah, against everyone else? Well, I think the engineer profiles, just to take that as an example of what you mentioned there is, is a really key one because if anyone's gonna be left off credits, it's most likely going to be an engineer or an assistant engineer. So yep. what we've found from talking to engineers is that this is the first time they've had a place where, you know, their credits are collected. And if they're not credited for a piece of work, they can come to Jackson and they can say, if they can prove to us that they've worked on a piece of music, we'll then go back to the distributor or to the record label um, and work with them to actually get that credit fixed. And then once that's credit fixed, once that credit is fixed, that then gets sent to all the streaming services as well. So we don't only fix it for Jaxta, we fix it for everyone who receives that metadata in the industry. Um, as for what works, I see working best. I mean, I think when people who are Jaxta Plus members and they prioritize their credits, that means they set up this little carousel at the top of their page, which has the images of the album covers or the single covers that they've worked on and they're, they're most proud of. Um, that instant, that's like an instant kit. As soon as you see someone's profile page and you see these colorful colors, but like within two seconds, you know about the biggest things that they've worked on or the things that they're most proud of, the things that they really want people to know about. So we're giving people the opportunity to take control of their credits in a way that hasn't been possible before. So I find in terms of very long-winded answer to your question, the things <laughs> that we're working the best are when people have set up that featured catalog on their page and when they've they also prioritized their credits so they've moved the credits they're proudest of to the top of their page. And when they've filled out their information, their bio, their contact details, um, the links to either their website or to ticketing outlets or to Spotify playlists, the more that they put on their Jaxta profile, the more it resembles their one-stop shop for everything they do and just gives them an incredible selling opportunity to promote their work. Um, so that's, Basically, if they take advantage of all those things, then because at the all the info in, <laughs> no, it's great. And you mentioned it's it's more than just a credit site. You know, we also have charts from around the world, from Apple, from Spotify, and all the data that we get is linked to those charts. So if you're an engineer, for example, you can set up a chart alert, which means that you get sent an alert every time a piece of music you've worked on is charting or has even been released through a credit alert. Um, and that's just information that hasn't been available to particularly the behind the scenes workers um, until now. So you, you're absolutely right. There are lots of different things that people can do with Jaxter, um, but I just sort of wanted to provide a very basic outline. And if anyone wants any more information, please reach out um, to me or to Jaxter and we would love to, um, to talk to you all about it. Perfect. We've got some other questions rolling as well, Rod, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Do you um, want to go in there or? Uh, I, I can read some of these out for you if you don't mind. 
Um, this one's from Jana. Uh, she asks, uh, I'd love to hear a bit more about how Jaxter helps get artists their royalties and how complicated it is to set that up. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, in terms of neighboring rights royalties, um, we have a relationship with Song Trader, a company, an Australian company, we're based in America. Um, and what they do is they use Jaxter's data uh, information to verify credits, to, to verify, um, so I'm trying to think, it's quite a complicated thing, which yeah. basically there's a, there's a form on Jaxter that you can fill out that then send that information then gets sent to Song Trader and Song Traders start looking for um, any work that you've been involved with that's been broadcast publicly. And then they, they then use, compare what they have with the credits on Jackster to make sure that all those credits are verified um, and that they're all correct and that you're entitled to that money. And once they have that proof, that's how they can start um, working um, to get you paid your neighboring rights royalties. As for um, songwriter royalties, um, you know we work very closely with APRA um, so all the information that we have on Jackster, um, again, it's a way that you can prove that you have worked. So you can go to APRA and you can prove with your Jackster profile that you've worked on the pieces of music that you're claiming. Um, and then they will, of course, look to see whether you're owed any royalties. So um, it's, it can sound quite complicated, but um, the fact that you have all your credits in one place makes it a lot easier to claim these royalties. Um, Mark's, sorry, you go. I was going to say, Mark's asked a question about all the features that you meant that I've mentioned. Um, and yes, you know what? I'm just actually going to share my screen again to show you something very quickly. Um, it's probably the easiest way to answer this. Um, the fact that, yes. Okay, so let me share my screen. So yes, so the, the features that I mentioned, some of them are costed and some of them are free. So Jack's Decor, as you can see on the left, that is everything on there is absolutely free. So you can just sign up to Jackster um, and you won't be charged. And that allows you to look at all the pages on Jackster. It gives you the ability to claim your profile. If you have a profile on Jackster, um, you can then customize that profile with your bio and your image and your key links. Um, you can use Jaxter to claim neighboring rights royalties and you get access to um, uh, customer service, um, which and I understand I'm very biased here, but I think is some of the best in the world. You will actually speak with a human when you call us. Um, if you Jaxter Plus, and this is $49 American US dollars a year. However, um, we actually have a special offer for all the Music ACT members who are here today, which gives you 50% off, which I think Billy will talk to you about a little bit later. That allows you to do everything that you can do with Jack's decor you can do but you can also access the Jack's to one sheet which is what I was mentioning earlier where you can present a one sheet um, with all the key details um, for all the work that you've done and with all your contact details and your bio and image which you can then send to people if you're pitching for a gig if you're or if you're pitching to a promoter for shows you can send them your one sheet it has your own URL with it they can look at it they can get a really quick snapshot of what you've done um, and it's very easy to set up. You can set up those credit alerts and chart alerts, which I mentioned before. You can set up that featured catalog at the top of your page. Um, you get access to an industry directory, which has uh, um, market information from the world's top 20 music markets, which lists all the events, um, award ceremonies and conferences that are happening in uh, those top 20 markets. You can link them to your Google calendar. So you can do a lot of planning for overseas if you're looking to tour or you're looking to create a release strategy. Um, you can get access to the global charts um, and you can manage up to five pro profiles as well. So there is, um, look, Jack's Decor is fantastic and has a really great introductory tier. Um, but yes, there is a lot more you can do with Jack's Decor Plus. Uh, and as I mentioned, we're very happy to offer a discount today. Um, so Jessica, is Jack's Decor appropriate for composers who write classical artworks to get released for composers? It, yeah, look, that's a wonderful question. And the answer is, sorry, Jessica, I should have read that question out. I just mumbled it. Is Jaxta appropriate for composers who write classical artworks that get released and for composers for film? The short answer to that is yes, but it will become more so uh, as we work to um, ingest all the works data um, that we'll be getting from people around the world. Um, and we will also, uh, we're also, um, constantly doing data partnership deals with distributors and with record labels. So 
Um, while we may not have, for example, much classical work on there at the moment, we certainly do have classical work on there. Um, and um, it is certainly appropriate for you. And um, I appreciate that that's probably not the best answer to that question. And I'd be more than happy to, um, for you to reach out and I can try and find some, a little bit more information to give you a more precise answer to that. But in short, the answer is yes. But Jessica, please reach out. Um, Billy has my details and I'd be more than happy to give you more information. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, have we got, if there are any more questions, then do send them through now. But um, just so you do know, I've just sent through that promo code uh, for that 50% off Jaxta Plus today. Uh, you'll also get that in an email um, with our feedback form. So if you did uh, take something away from today uh, that was super positive or something that you think we should change in the future, please let us know. We're always trying to make these things better. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Rod, for jumping on today and for taking us through Jackstar. It's like such an important service that every musician, every engineer, every songwriter should really know about. Um, so thank you so much for taking us through it today. Um, just my, last quick check of the questions. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what you were saying. My, it's my pleasure. Thank oh. you. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for asking and thank you for everyone who's, um, who's watched and um, I really appreciate your time. So as I mentioned, check out jaxta.com. Please reach out if you have any questions. We would love to talk to you more about everything to do with Jaxta, not about everything. You can't just ring <laughs> we will We will talk to you about, uh, about everything to do with credits and Jaxta. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining us today. Um, keep your eyes peeled for that email and we'll speak to you all soon.